the FDA has cleared a new tubeless insulin pump and it's called the AccuCheck Solo and it's coming from the company Roche. And get this, it is a semi-reusable pump. That means there are parts of this pump that are used over a long period of time, anywhere from three months to one full year. Welcome to Diabet Tech. I'm Justin. I'm here. I talk all things diabetes tech, news, and management. And today I'm so excited to talk to you about this new insulin pump that is coming to the United States. It's already been available in Europe since 2018 in up to 19 markets globally, including Austria, Poland, Switzerland, and the UK. It's coming here, and there is so much to tell you about it. The cool thing about this is it's going to drive innovation in the tubeless insulin pump department. I've already spoken about Medtronic's new EOFlow that they're working on and Tandem's Siggy tubeless pump. If you want to learn more about those, I've got videos on this channel. The AccuCheck Solo is for those who are two years and older, and there is so much to tell you about from which parts are reusable, which are disposable, how it works, its quick bolus buttons right on the device, and so much more. So let's get into it. The AccuCheck Solo has three reusable parts and three disposable parts. Let's get into those. First, you've got the main piece, which is the pump base. This lasts up to 120 days or three months, and this is the main component that's going to clip onto your body. On the base, there are quick bolus buttons. These are meant to be used when you're not near the PDM device and you want to bolus for insulin. It can bolus a half unit, one unit, or two units at a time. The next device you'll have is that PDM. This is what's used to create settings for the pump and used to control it unless you're using those quick bolus buttons. And then get this, one of its other reasonable parts is the applicator. This lasts up to one full year. This is called the insertion device. And this is what's used to put down basically an underlay pad onto your body, which the insulin pump will clip into. I'll get into how that works in just a bit. The underlay pad, which is put down using that applicator, that lasts three days just like Omnipod. The insulin pump can be clipped into it and removed. And why would you want to remove it? Well, one reason could be because this pump isn't officially waterproof, at least not like the Omnipod is. The Omnipod can be in under 25 feet for up to 60 minutes. This one, and that has an IP28 rating. This one only has an IP22 rating. And from my research, that really can only survive like sprays of water. So you're going to want to remove this pod whenever you're going swimming or even going in the shower. Now, along with that pump pad that is being placed down using that applicator, there's also a cannula piece that you put into that insertion device that inserts the cannula along with the pad. The cannula comes in two different sizes, either six millimeter or nine millimeter, and is inserted at a 90 degree angle. The cannula is a disposable piece that is thrown away with the pad every three days. And next you've got the reservoir. This is also a disposable piece, and this is the main component that gets connected to that pump base that holds your insulin. It also is what connects to the pad and allows the insulin to flow through the cannula into your body. Interestingly, the reservoir lasts four days. So if you switch out your pump after three days and there's still insulin in the reservoir, you have an extra day to use up that insulin before it goes to waste. The reservoir holds up to 200 units in as little as 80 units, which is the same as Omnipod. And it works with insulin such as Humalog, Novolog, Novo Rapid, and Fios. Now let's talk about size. This is a pretty competitive size when it compares to Omnipod. Here's what it looks like. The Omnipod is 52 millimeters long, 39 millimeters wide, and 14.5 millimeters thick. It weighs 26 grams with an empty reservoir. The AccuCheck Solo is a bit longer at 63 millimeters, the same width of 39 millimeters, and just a bit less thick at 14 millimeters. Roche says that it weighs less than 29 grams with a full reservoir, which means with an empty reservoir, they probably weigh about the same. Now let's talk about how you put this thing on. Each time you put on a new AccuCheck, you're going to need a new reservoir. The reservoir could be filled up right on the device. You push in an insulin vial and then pull out the syringe and then it will fill up with insulin. Next, you'll have to remove the cap and plug it into the reusable base. 
You'll also open up a package with a new pad and a cannula, and these are going to be placed onto the insertion device. That pad is put onto the bottom of the insertion device. Then there's a cannula compartment that you put that in. Once those are installed, you twist the little handle, and then you're ready to apply the new pad and the new cannula. I'm not sure where this device is approved, but the promotional video shows it on the abdomen, so it's definitely gonna work there. You place down the insertion device on your body, make sure that the adhesive is secure, and then you can click the button and it will apply the pad. Then you have that reservoir connected to the reusable base and that is twisted and then clipped into the pad and you're good to go. Here are some specifics on what the pump can do when it comes to treatment. For temp basal rates, the pump can set zero to 90% basal rate reductions and 110 to 250 basal rate increases in increments of 10%. The duration for these is adjustable in 15 minute increments for a time period up to 24 hours and you can program up to five individual temp basal rates right on the PDM. Like I said earlier, there are quick bolus buttons on the device. To control these quick boluses, you'll use two fingers to pinch either button on both sides of the pump, and then there will be audible beeps that let you know how many units of insulin are going to be injected, and then you'll need to confirm. Once confirmed, it will start giving you the insulin. Now let me get into what this pump means for the future. First of all, this pump doesn't work with any CGMs. Omnipod and Tandem and even Medtronic, those all work with CGMs to create a closed loop system where your CGM is being read by the pump and then insulin is being adjusted. This one doesn't do that yet. The company says that that is likely in the future, even specifically with what some of their CGMs that may be coming, but there are no dates for that and there's no idea for when that will be coming. Ultimately, what this does symbolize is more competition in the space. Omnipod now has a little more pressure because of this pump and even its quick bolus buttons, which are pretty awesome to have on there when you aren't near that PDM. Then you've got Medtronic's EO flow that they're working on. I did a video on that. You should check it out. And then the Siggy pump, which was acquired by Tandem. I also have a video on that. Tubeless insulin pump innovation is going to be driven way faster because all of these pumps are coming in. Would I recommend this pump for most people? Probably not, and that's because it isn't closed loop. Could this be a good pump option for people who don't want closed loop? Absolutely, and I'm very curious to hear what people think about it. I wanna have someone who's worn it in Europe for some time now on my podcast to talk about what their experience has been with the pump. So if you're someone who's worn this pump for a long period of time, hit me up, let me know in the comments. I would love to have you on the podcast to talk all about your experience. I do hope that Roche looks into working with the Dexcom G6, the Dexcom G7, and even the Libre 2 and 3. I interviewed Abbott all about the future of Libre 2 and 3, and they said that they want more pump companies to work with them. If you wanna see that interview, it's up on my YouTube channel already. I'll put links to these videos either on screen now or down in the description. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click that bell if you want to get alerted as soon as my videos drop. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a like so other people can find it. I'm Justin, and I'll tech you later.